All right, let's um, let's have a look at some drawings. Now, this is a universal load cell that measures weight, and it's a product that we're going to buy to work with a tensometer that we're going to use. To see how we've got a pictorial representation over here to show people what it looks like. And on the back of the sheet of paper, lo and behold, we have an isometric drawing. Sorry, not an isometric. You can correct me on that. It's a orthographic drawing. And it's in third angle projection. So here's the front view, and there's the right hand side view. And you can see how it's dimensioned, and all the dimensions are given ABCs, and the various different lengths are written down over here ABC. And notice that there's no um, millimeters markings, it's all implied to be in millimeters because that's how most of the civilized world works. So that's just an example of um, engineering drawing being given. If you had to make the part, you could make the part from that drawing over there, and that's what it looks like. Similar thing over here, here's another part on that sort of a drawing. These are rod ends for the load cells. So there's your pictorial, and that would be, what kind of drawing do you think? Look at the angles, 30 degrees and 30 degrees. You guessed it, it's an isometric drawing. And so therefore, it's actually a photograph, but it's an isometric view, pictorial view. And here is our orthogonal view. And you can see from the orthogonal view, looking at this section over here, there's a front view here and a right hand side view there. Again, dimensioned center lines. I'll try and make a little bit of a view for you there. So you can see the center lines floating around and dimensions. And this drawing is a bit interesting over here. Uh, what you're looking at there is, is something which is going to be, um, has a cutaway section in it. So this little section over here which indicates a cutaway where you look inside. And you show the cut section by using some cross hatching. And it, that's threaded, that section there is threaded, and the threaded section is indicated by those little double lines on the side. It's a bit hard to see there, but uh, all circles have center lines. So it's a really useful drawing if you had to make that product. Okay? All right. Now, the real point of today's lesson is to talk to you a little bit about isometric drawing. And we're going to be drawing this block that you see over here. Here it is, that's the block. We're going to be sketching by hand, and here it is. It's just a cutaway block. It could be a slipper block or a, a holding a cushion for a shaft or for um, some kind of frame or bracket. I've coloured them different shapes, different sizes, the different faces. I should say I've coloured them different colours so you can get a feel for what we're doing. When I refer to them, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so you notice on the drawing here, I've indicated that this is the front. So we're going to view this section, the red section here, as the front. There it is there. Okay, um, it's going to be positioned in a viewing plane. So you imagine there's a sheet of glass here where my, my fingers are. We're looking at it from that direction and we're going to look at the object through that window, so to speak. And if it's an isometric, then the two sides will retreat away evenly at 30 degrees. So I can match it up like that for you. There you go. So they're retreating away at 30 degrees from the viewing plane. And that's in fact what you're looking at. All right, so that means that all the faces that are at right angles to each other should be in true length. So the lengths here should be one to one lengths together with the model. And of course, if I put it down there, you can see that they are in fact one to one lengths. There we go, pretty close. I'll do it from this side so you can see a little bit better. They're one to one lengths. So that makes it easier to dimension it. So how do we draw something like this? Well, let's start from scratch and I'll show you how to do it. First thing is set up your, your viewing pane or your window line, which will be down the bottom of the page. Now I'm going to use a thinner pen to do this. And we're going to draw a line straight across the bottom. Keeping my arm fairly straight. And now I'm going to find the centre to draw up a centre line. It's only fairly light because these are called construction lines. Now, next thing I've got to have two, because I'm going to make this thing sit right up against my window pane, I need two angles at 30 degrees. All right, what's 30 degrees? Well, if you have a triangle which measures approximately 6 by 5, that will be about 3.2 or something like that, and that will make that 30 degrees. So if you want to just work out just using Pythagoras' theorem, See, Pythagoras does come in handy, after all. We'll just go 5 here, because 5 squared is 25. We'll go 
three and a bit up here to there and that should be approximately six there it is it's about six so that means from here to there will give me an angle of approximately 30 degrees so I'm just going to do a little light construction line 30 degrees the same thing on the other side I'll go from five to here now of course I haven't got a protractor but I'm using a little bit of geometry plane geometry to be able to do this reasonably accurately to make it look real now, I'm moving the sheet of paper around to suit my arm so I can do myself a nice construction line over here here we go all right so there's my two 30 degree angles that's 30 degrees and that's 30 degrees so looking at the original sheet I've now got my viewing pane, I've got 30 degrees and 30 degrees coming off the base. Now because it's a square, well I should say a rectangular shape, I need to, I can start creating a shape that will bound a whole box. So what I'm doing now is I'm just measuring these lines, I'll do it from this way so you can see a little bit better. I'm stepping off the distances which are one to one. I'm going to create the box. Now that side this edge here is clearly parallel to that edge. So when I draw them on the paper, they also must be parallel. So I draw it up here. It's a parallel line. Same thing on this side. I know this edge has got to be parallel to that edge, which are represented here, like that. So those edges are parallel. So I'm, they need to be parallel here as well. Next thing, I've got to go the correct height. So I'll measure that height off because all the distances are one to one. And I've got to draw a parallel line. So I've got to draw, because this edge here, that edge there, is parallel to this edge here. Now I'm only still doing light construction lines. There we go. I'm going to do the same on this side because I know that this edge, this edge here, that edge, is going to be parallel to this edge. So let's make them parallel as near as we can. Now if you're a bit hesitant on how to do that, you can just step off the distance here, step off the distance there, and then draw your lines to make them meet. Take your time. There we go. And now we're starting to get a bit more of a shape. Now we've got the back edge here, it's sitting like that. There's the back edge across here, it's going to be parallel to that front edge. So I know these lines have to be parallel as well. Now it's a little bit trickier to do this, with a bit of practice, you should be able to do it reasonably well. And of course, parallel across the back here. This edge here is going to be parallel to that edge. Like that. So I've got our shape starting to form up there. Now, I know I've got a, a little side cut out in here. Down, here, and up. So we've got a distance here we've got to measure across. There it is over there. We've got a certain distance to come down. Now we can use a ruler too if we want to. There's no harm, we're not cheating. Um, I'm going to measure that. It's going to be 30 millimetres. So we're going to come down here, straight down, construction line, but I'm going to stop at 30 millimetres because from there I need to go across. Because remember how this edge here is parallel to that edge down there. So I can draw them parallel across. How far across, you say? Well, if I measure it, it's actually 30 millimetres. So I'm going to go 30 millimetres across. Now we could cheat and use a ruler and do this with a ruler, but I don't want you to. I want you to get the practice of getting control with your pen or pencil and drawing some straight lines and gaining confidence. This is a fantastic skill that all engineers, all designers need to be able to do. Here we go. There's another one across over here. Line them up. And now we're starting to get our shape. That shape's going to come down here. And that one's going to go across like that. So I've kind of got the shape now. You can see it. That's what the shape looks like. But I've just done outlines. I'm now going to get my pen, my thicker pen. And I'm going to firm in these outlines. Now I like doing it so that we firm it with all the edges that are parallel to each other. Do it all in the one hit. And that way we don't have to move the paper around quite so much. I hope you see what I mean here. Okay, and then we'll do the other edges, these ones. One. It's quite fun actually doing this. It's very therapeutic. Tracing over your lines. You can make little small corrections if you need to. At the same time. 
and then move across and do these ones. And we've got a pretty good likeness and representation of what our object looks like. If you put the two of them together, the real object and the drawn object, you're going to start to see that one, and why the camera distorts this, this actually looks smaller than the drawing because there's, because it's been opened out a bit, you get a deceptive effect. Okay, now, next thing you want to do is look at doing some dimensions. So the dimensions, you extend out, and you can use your construction lines for this. Dimensions extend out. They don't quite touch. They go out like this. And I'm going to create some dimensions across this face. So I'm going to draw my dimensioning line, small arrows, like this. And I'm going to write my dimensions in here. Now that was 30, this was 30, and that was 12. You see how these follow to give you an idea that they're sitting on the same plane, the dimensions look like. Across the back here, dimensioning line, dimensioning line. Try and keep them parallel. Now it's always a good idea to sit your numbers above the dimensioning line. So this one over here will be 57, I know because I've measured it before. Now remember we're going to do some other dimensions here too. We know these, that length, so we know this length. What about that distance down here? Now whenever you're doing dimensions, try and keep the dimensions away from your drawing. So you're not drawing your numbers on top of your drawing. It helps them keep it clearer. Okay, so that dimension down here, I'm not quite sure what it is, but I bet you it's going to be close to 30, and yes it is. So we've got 30 here as well. Do your drawings nice and neat. And you can see you can dimension all the object as you need to. And based on this, maybe we'll do one more dimension down here. Just to indicate that this object is in fact squarish in its shape. And that's enough for us to really be able to make the object if we knew what everything looked like. Now, if there was a hole that had been drilled in the back here, and we're holding the object like that, we can't really see that hole, so a pictorial drawing is not sufficient. That's the situation where you start to need something like a orthogonal drawing, which gives you all the hidden detail, like this drawing over here. You can see the hole that's indicated there in hidden detail lines. When you look at the picture, that's that hole at the top there. And there's the details, including the thread width, the thread width and so pitch and so forth. Okay, now, um, you can make this object look a little bit more realistic if you want by doing a bit of shading. Imagine the light source coming from, say, the side like that, and we have our object sitting here. You can see that some faces will appear to be brighter, closer, and the faces that are further away from the light will be darker. So to do that, we can just use some cross-hatching, and here's where practicing your wonderful straight lines can help you. to indicate surfaces which are going to be a little bit darker than other surfaces. Now again, we're not looking for sheer perfection here. We're just looking for something that gives us an appearance, an idea that it's a three-dimensional shape. It also helps if you want to draw and make your outline a little bit thicker. Now if you happen to be not an engineer so much, but you're a designer, and you want this thing to really pop out of the page and start to look a little bit more dramatic, Thicken the outer edge like that, and then you can produce a shadow. And if the light's coming down this way, your shadow is going to have an appearance that'll be a little bit like, sort of like this. It'll come out here like that, and it'll come in like this. And you can blacken this outline. Leave a little bit of white space just around there. And then you can create a shadow. Now, of course, I'm going to obliterate my, my beautiful lines over here, my dimensioning lines. But now I've stopped it from being a true isometric drawing because I'm a, isometric drawings won't have shadows. And I've made it into more of a pictorial drawing, which is represented by 3D. So, again, I'll tell you, I'm de departing from the, um, the strict isometric drawing. And I'm starting to create a shape, a shadowed shape, which will start to make the object look more three-dimensional. And I've got a crisp line out the side here. And you can see now that that's starting to look much more like an object that's realistic and lifelike. And I can improve on that even further should I choose. Okay, so there's your basics of isometric drawing. Now your next task is to take yourself, this block which I'm showing you over here, you can look at it, freeze the frame, and I want you to copy this block exactly 
You know the dimensions I've given to you to them to you over here. And I want you to reproduce this block for me. Just remember that the overall length, which I've obliterated down here, is 57. So that will be 27. Okay? So I want you to reproduce this block for me and send it into your Google Classroom. Thanks, guys. See ya.